so we have done with the manual automatic process now moving next to the automatic payment process automatic payment process has been performed through the automatic payment program uh, automatic payment program is a tool that will help users to manage the vendor payables the purpose is to process payment of vendors invoices automatically understanding standard SAP banking process to be customized before going to automatic payment program we need to understand how the bank transactions are done in automatic payment programs through SAP in a normal process as we have seen earlier that one particular bank GL account has been involved for all the business transactions whether related to incoming outgoing or any other transactions related to bank but when you move to automatic program we follow the standard SAP process and the standard SAP process says that uh, the bank one particular bank has to be divided into several bank accounts or it can be said that so in SAP the banking transactions are subdivided into sub accounts that is the incoming and outgoing transactions are taken into separate sub accounts uh, the sub accounts can be divided into three parts one is a main bank account another is another two are termed as sub accounts sub accounts are entered in the automatic payment program and sub accounts are mainly used in the banking transactions we use the sub accounts for vendor or customer payments so basically there could be an incoming payment or an outgoing payment for banking transactions so incoming payment is given a different GL number that is the sub account and for outgoing payment there is a separate GL account bank GL account so these two are different and apart from that the main bank account is the important part in which all the reconciliations take place so sub accounts are mainly used in banking transactions whereas the main account is for bank reconciliation so in SAP banking transactions are passed through the bank sub account and main account as we discussed sub accounts are assigned in FBZP that is the transaction code uh, otherwise we say it as automatic payment program the main bank account is the actual balance as per the bank statement so we as per the day-to-day -day transactions are carried out in the sub accounts basically and when the bank reconciliations take place then the balances get updated in the main bank and then the main bank becomes the actual balance as per the bank statements so as per the standard process we divide the transactions into three different ledger accounts for one bank main bank and sub account sub account could uh, is are divided into two parts one is outgoing bank GL and one is incoming bank GL so in outgoing bank GL we perform all the outgoing payments like vendor payments whereas incoming GL account we pass the transactions related to incoming payment like customer payments and the main bank account is where the reconciliations take place and all the open items which are reconciled from the sub accounts get transferred or get cleared to the main bank account now moving next is to start with the automatic process configurations we need to understand some of the terminology which will be used while doing the customization so one of that is the house bank house bank is the bank of the company for which the transactions are done so banks with which the company maintains a bank account house bank represents a branch of a bank house banks are 
the banks for your clients. One house bank can have multiple bank accounts assigned to it. House bank identify the house bank country. House bank ID is a number decided by you. Main bank account is entered in the house bank master data. So as said, house banks are the banks for your clients. Your client uses these for its banking transactions. One house bank can have a multiple bank account assigned to it. A bank house bank can has a unique a house bank has a unique bank key and bank key differ by each company code norms. So country to country the bank key will be different. A house bank is tied to a company code and each bank account is tied to a house bank. So first we select the company code for which the house bank is to be created. So in a simple words house bank is the bank with which your company maintains a bank account. Now company means the company code in SAP. House banks are banks through which you carry out your payment normally a house bank will be entered in the company code to process the payments. Each house bank of a company code is represented by a bank ID in the SAP system. And as said on the slide the main bank account that is the main GL master account is entered in the house bank master data. The another part is bank account ID and bank key. Account ID represents bank account number which can have a maximum of 18 characters and account key uh, sorry account ID is also mapped to a GL account whereas bank key bank master data is stored centrally in the bank in the SAP system a house bank has a unique bank key or bank ID bank key differ by each country norms so there are different bank keys as per the different countries so now moving up first is the account ID each house bank have one or more bank accounts represented by an account ID. The house bank can have a maximum of 5 characters whereas the account ID can have a maximum of sorry the account bank number can have a maximum of 18 characters. So let's take an example that my company or the company I am configuring has his bank with Citibank. So all the transactions, banking transactions are done with Citibank by the company. So we need to first create a house bank with the name of Citibank so as to do the transactions in the SAP system. And when we create a house bank as Citibank, we need to define the account ID as well as the bank key. Now in this bank key works as a bank master data whereas the account ID contains the bank's account number and the sub accounts to which the transactions will be done. So each bank each account ID will also have a bank account number and each ID will be mapped or assigned to a GL accounts in which the the transactions will be done. Bank key. Bank key is a major bank identifier. Bank master records are created at client level. Bank key is also known as the bank master data in SAP. Master data is stored centrally in a bank directory and the data is made up of communication that is address data and control data. Of all the banks that are needed to transfer with both domestic and foreign. 
it also contains the codes that helps overseas banks identify which bank to send money to for example an overseas bank is sending to a payment to your your bank then they will be needing a swift code for international transfer of funds so this is what we will be doing in the automatic payment program we will be first defining a house bank and while defining after that we will be assign defining the account ID and the bank keys and we'll see what are the configurations done while creating these things so that your automatic program could work properly so moving to the next as in the diagram you can see that the bank account in the SAP has house bank and account ID so house bank and account ID is there but when we create bank GL account in that we assign an account ID so these things we will see how these are linked to each other through the configurations so account ID is the one which link your house bank to the account number that is the GL account number GL master data so these both are linked to each other on the basis of account ID and the bank account number at the house bank now moving to the configuration part in configuration the steps are as above first we need to create a house bank then we need to create the bank account number that is the bank GL number and then we will be doing the configuration the major configurations that is maintaining the payment program so this is the most important configuration part after the house bank where we do all the customizations and configurations so that the automatic payment program could work properly so in this we will be doing the all company code settings paying company code payment methods in the country then payment methods in company code bank determination and once these configurations are done we will be doing the unit testing so as to check that our program and payments are done automatically and successfully so moving to the next is the house bank so the house bank path is given to you how we can create the house bank into the SAP system and the transaction code is even given to you so that you can directly use the shortcut while using the transaction code so let's move to the SAP system now so as to configure the things so the path is there that we need to go to the IMG screen then the financial accounting bank accounting then bank accounts and defining the house bank so let's move to the SPRO IMG screen financial accounting new bank accounting then bank accounts and then the define house banks so first we will be defining the house bank so this is the first step in the configuration of bank accounting is to create the house bank which are the bank your company use for banking purposes a house bank can have several bank accounts linked to it as a part of re-engineering phase of your project it is important to analyze which and how many banks and bank accounts your company use a unique banky identifies each house bank so moving up to define the house bank first so configuring the house bank is relatively simple it is much like setting up the master data in the system as you can see a house bank is tied to a company code there is the company code and you need to it's been tied with the com, with the company code and each bank account is tied to a house bank so house bank bank account so the the company code is tied with the house bank 
and then the house bank is tied with the bank account so now to create the house bank we need to go to the new entries so house bank identifier is an alphanumeric and can be up to five characters in length the bank country in the country where the bank and your accounts reside so moving up to the new entries to define the house bank you can see that the company code is over there and now we can create our own house bank so suppose I create SITA city for city bank I am defining the house bank as city so your house bank could be anything it's up to you whatever you want to wish to have so then you have the bank country so that is what the bank country is the country where the bank and your company accounts reside so over here the bank country is US suppose I take it now the bank key bank key is a required field you must have to fill it in the United States the bank key also known as the ABA number is a nine digit field the ABA number along with your account number and check number is printed on the bottom of your check and is also known as the MICR number that is the micro encoding number now moving up to this you can have a bank key of your own so it's up to you what bank key you want to have depending upon your country to country so suppose for example I take it like uh, up to my wish so I took a nine digit bank key over here and once I took this now we can see that below there are three more options so the settings made here are default settings for the United States now enter the bank key as we entered and then we can press enter and there are three buttons on the on the below side over here you can see that so what we can do is now we can save this much and as you say we can say a new pop-up has been has been come up to you you can either cross it or this pop-up will come to you when you will click on this create button as well so this is a mandatory part which you need to fill so cl uh, click on to the create button on the right side of the screen as you can see the cursor this is where you need to define the address which has been shown over here so go to create and you can see the screen is coming up to you over here you can define the company further details so this is what is termed as the master data this is what bank master data is all about so bank master data is also known as the bank key there is a separate transaction code for bank key or bank master data is that is FI01 however you can also define it from here as well as you can see so now here you can have your bank name like I had City Bank. Then you can decide your reason. So you can have your region selected. The list of regions are there, and you can decide from them what region you want to have it. Like for example, I can have my as suppose California, or let's take okay let's take it as Austin is not there okay suppose I take it as Texas as my reason I can put my address over here as well then the city and then you can have the branch bank branch as well suppose I take it as Austin only so this is what where you need to fill the address so once you fill this next is the swift below swift code 
Swift code stands for Society of Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications, the full form of it. Now, in the basic words, Swift code are used throughout the world to identify banks in international transactions. So, if your company have any international transactions, in that in that case, you need a Swift code from your bank, and that particular Swift code will be will need to be assigned over here. You cannot have your own number or any code for that matter. So you need to have a code from the bank so as the international transactions can be done. It is a good idea to enter the SWIFT code of your bank if you want to conduct international transactions or businesses. So right now I am not taking any SWIFT code right as of now as there is no swift code on my side you need to have it from your bank and that you can fill it over here rest of the things you are not needed to take up with so we can proceed further continue so your bank master data that is the banking address have been defined too now moving ahead now we can save it so the request is saved now you can see the data has been saved means your house bank is configured so now that the house bank is fully configured it is the time to create the accounts that go with it as we stated earlier each bank account is tied to one house bank to create a bank account you need to go to banks so let's double click on this bank account and it will take you to the next screen where we can define the bank account to the house bank so double click on this tab will take it to you to the next screen and as of now there is nothing defined in it so to define your own bank account with the house bank you need to go to the new entries so when I go to the new entries now in this case you can see that I need to enter the account ID so this is where this account ID is there and here you put your bank account number as well so that is why we say that the account ID contains your bank account number and it also contains the bank account that is the bank GL ledger account so over here you can put your bank account ID over here suppose I take the ID as AP for payments so you can put the description as well city bank house bank now you can put your account number bank account number over here like uh, suppose this is my this is my company's bank account number and over here you need to put the GL account in which all the transactions is supposed to be posted so basically as I said in the earlier that we take three different GL account for one particular bank one GL is termed as the main account main GL and another two are termed as outcoming and incoming outgoing and incoming GL accounts so over here we will be taking the main bank now so the main bank will be let's select so I take this the city bank as the main bank double click so this is what I took it now over here you need to put the currency so currency enter the currency in which this account is managed so whatever the currency you will take in that particular currency this house bank will be managed 
if you don't know the currency you can have the list with this you can go and you can have the list drop out over there so you can find the list and from this you can decide your currency which you want to take up like for me it is USD American dollar so I selected this we also took the GL the bank account updates the GL account entered here the GL is structure for the bank so once we fill these part our bank account settings has been done you can save it and your house bank customization has been done so this is what the uh, first important customization of bank accounting now moving next is so we have complete with the house bank moving next is create bank GL account so we have already created one we would be creating three bank account over here first is like we city bank main other will be city bank outgoing account and the next will be bank incoming account so we need to create these three different accounts one we have already created one zero 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 one zero as we assigned it in the house bank so we'll be creating the next one zero zero one one and then one zero 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 one two so we'll be creating these three different GL account for banks one particular bank that is city bank and these three different GL will be taken up so let's move and create the other two GL which we need slash o fs double zero in a new session so in this we'll, we already have created one that is city bank you can see that but huh, for better clarification we can go and we can edit this now here I can put over here as city bank main here also I can put it as main account so as to have a better clarification about the three banks and save it now I need to create the next that is 11 number I can copy it from here so I can change it over here as outgoing outgoing account the rest of the settings will be the same for this ledger account save it so your outgoing bank jail is created the same way we can create the incoming bank jail so again we can copy it with this and we can go to the description and now it is incoming account so this way we have created three GLs one we have already assigned in the house bank the other two that is outgoing and incoming will be assigned as a sub account later in the customization so this is what the second customization was first we have completed with the creation of house bank second bank GL creation we have already done now moving to the another important part that is maintain payment program 
Uh, configuring the payment program allows you to determine exactly how and when vendor invoices should be get paid. You can configure many settings in the payment program which provides you with a lot of flexibility in how you process payables in your production system that is the live system. SAP allows both vendors and customer line items to be paid through the payment program. The ability to pay customers comes in handy when used in conjunction with those of SAP's other standard functionality like sales and distribution module. So payment program configuration is a series of steps as you have seen earlier so it includes these all steps all together that is why we say it is a series of steps that are configured within one particular program in this particular program we will be covering these five different customizations so that the payment program can be configured fully in the older version of SAP, the configuration screen was housed on one main configuration screen but over here it has been divided into a series of steps. The configuration transaction for the payment program is shown in the following sections. So let's move to the SAP screen so that we can do these customizations. So moving back the path as we see in the path in this I am just scheme accounts accounts payable and receivable business transaction outgoing payment so we can go back to the path in this we now need to go to accounts payable and receivable then to business transactions and after business transactions we need to go to outgoing payments then we need to go to automatic payment outgoing payments so manual we have already completed moving to the next automatic now in this you can find payment method oblique bank selection for payment program so this is where we need to configure the system for the number of sets now moving up over here the first step is all company codes so moving to the very first step that is this setup all company codes for payment transactions so in this particular step this is the first configuration step to set up your company code so it is available to the payment program in addition to making the company code available to the payment program this setting specifies a lot of general control data for the company code so to configure this we need to go to execute this button here is where you enter the company code so you need to go to this new entries first so here we first need to go to the new entries now as you move to the new entry here is where you need to enter the company code you want to make available to the payment program so my company code is 1200 then we need to put the sending company code and paying company code so you can see that the sending company code is not mandatory where but the paying company code is mandatory so we need to enter the company code in both of these fields 1200 and the paying company code is a mandatory field which need to be filled anyhow 
this is a required entry and even if the paying company code is the same to the company code we need to fill it now moving to the next is separate payment per business area so if you want the payment to be done as per the business area for the vendors you need to checkpoint this but we will not be using this as the business area concept is not very much encouraged for payment processes moving next is the payment method supplement now this allows the user to determine how customer and vendors ask to be paid so we don't need all those things as of now next is the tolerance days for payable so if a company wants to grant itself grace days then we need to enter the number of days of grace how much you want to give to the vendors so for grace days we put the tolerance days over here outgoing payment with cash discount now over here you need to put a discount percentages in case you want a limit to the maximum discount that can be provided by the company but normally we doesn't put any percentages over here because it could be anything as per the business required it could be 50% discount so the business scenarios keep on changing that is why we always put this maximum cash discount checkbox so you need to click this checkbox because we always take this as a preferred option for the customization below is for vendor special GL transactions for vendor and customers so in that we don't need to do anything because we are not certain for which special GL indicators we need these restrictions to be put on so we will let them blank if we let them blank it will be applicable for all these special GL indicators but in case you put any indicator over here then it will be restricted to that particular indicator so we will not filling that anything at all in so we can go and we can save it so the request you can see the configuration have been saved to the request over here continue so the very first step of con of the payment program has been configured moving to the next payment program step back to the path so the next step in this is set up paying company code for payment transaction now the second step is to set up the parameter for paying company code so you can see this paying company code word that means we need to set the parameters for the paying company code so we need to execute it now again over here our company code 1200 is not there so we need to go to new entries in this screen new entries so now again over here we need to put the paying company code that is 1200 and now you can see in the control data there are two fields minimum amount for incoming payment and minimum amount for outgoing payment so what will be the minimum amount in both the cases for minimum amount for incoming payment if you want to stop the system from generating the debit memos of the amount below a certain threshold we need to enter that amount here only the debit memos with an amount equal to or above the amount entered in this field will be generated by the system whereas income minimum amount for outgoing payment if you want to stop the system from generating checks for amounts below a certain limit then we need to put that limit amount here only checks with a with an amount equal to or above than that limit will be allowed for the payment by the system so over here we can put as hundred dollars as a minimum payment with that we will be making or we will be receiving 
then next of these steps we will not be doing anything in them they are not needed for automatic payment programs so this is what the bare minimum settings which you need to do in this case now moving further over here you can see that there is a forms now in this form there are two options so enter the identifier of the SAP script to be used for payment advice so you can see this particular first field is for payment advice so in case you want to have the print of the advice whenever we make the payment to the vendor so for that we need to assign a script in this case and that script we need to we need to look for so let's see finding it out f4 we can go to this United States and then we can go searching for our suppose I take it as So I have taken the advice script. Basically in this, if you want to print the payment advice at the time of payment, you need to assign the scripts which has been developed for the print by the client. So payment advice are sent to the vendors along with the checks made. For that we assign a script for the payment advice so that system automatically prints the advice for the payment as well which you can attach with the check and can send it to the vendor for clarity so this is what the second setting is all about and you can save it and your second customization or configurations have been done for automatic payment program moving to the next now the next is payment method per country so we need to define the payment method per country the third step in the configuration of payment program country payment method specify which payment methods to be followed so over here there are different methods of making payment one could be check one could be wire transfers one could be ACH so which over the payment method to be followed has to be configured in the system and can be used by the company code in a specific country the country payment method configuration specifies the general control parameter for a payment method so whatever the payment method we are over here defining will be for a particular country as the name of the step itself suggests the payment method per country so we'll go to this execute it and we'll define the payment method so you can see our country is United States so there are number of payment methods already defined over here a list of payment method so what we will be using is check so check method is already there if in case it was not there you could have added with the new entry but we don't need to do that because it is already there if you want to see you can double click on check and you can see whatever the details have been filled in this case so for check outgoing payment has been marked check will be the payment method classification then we need to post office allow for personal payment take this off take this off we don't need these things now this is the important part that you need to define the document type for payment and clearing document number these two things you must need to take care of and after that you can save and your next configuration step is done back so we are done with the first three configuration steps the next is payment method per company code the fourth step to the configuration of payment program is to make further specifications to the payment type that were created in the preceding section. 
so the company code payment method allows further control on how the payment method works in the system the reason behind that is suppose united states is the is the country and in united states i have got four different company codes so i want to restrict my particular company code that in that only the check method will be used for payment so how can i restrict because it is at the country level so for those restrictions the payment method for company code is applicable where if there are number of different payment methods for the country is applicable but out of that only one or a few i need to use for the company code as a payment method i can use this particular step for restricting and be more specific so this is why we need this now let's move on to configure this particular part as a payment method for company code so executing this now in case uh, you can see that there is already company code is already there in it if you want to assign you could have assigned it suppose let's we take one more to new entries and then you need to take the payment over here 1200 you need to assign the payment method suppose i need to take the check so c is over here we need to assign the minimum amount and the maximum amount now the minimum amount field on this screen controls the minimum amount for the payment method so the minimum amount for the payment method that is check has to be specified you cannot print checks or cannot be assigned checks if the amount is less than this minimum amount where is the maximum suppose i assign it over here as 100 dollars as a minimum amount for the check the next is maximum amount now over here you need to put the maximum amount that can be paid by this particular payment method on items that are not explicitly assigned a payment method so if you fix any amount as a maximum amount in that case it will be a problem because you cannot or you will not be able to use check above than that amount so we will not fill any amount over here we will let it be blank as we don't need any restrictions on the maximum side the next comes up over here is single payment this tab single payment for marked items so if you activate this field you will be able to make individual payment for each line item assigned for one particular vendor so if a vendor have got four line items that is four invoices then the system will start making four checks for four invoices so if you want that you can tick mark or you can select this tab this particular box as a single payment for marked items so we will not be taking it as this is not encouraged this is not used in any of the businesses in today's world payment per due date activate this field if you want to group together items by payment date this feature means that only items with the same due date for a vendor will be grouped together for the payment so if i have got suppose 20 line items in my vendor account and out of that only two is falling in the same due date then that payment uh, together one group payment can be made for those two invoices so again if suppose within a two days range i am I, my two invoices are due i will not be able to make the payment for all the four invoices in one go in one particular check so will not encourage those kind of things because this has not been suggested normally all items regardless due date for the vendors are grouped together and the payment is made if they are a couple of days ahead or before so we will not need to take anything out of it 
now bank section control we need to take the no optimization part on this side foreign payments we don't need to do anything in this so this is it and again we can save it and uh, this configuration is also complete into the maximum amount which is greater than the minimum amount okay so it asks you for putting up a maximum amount so let's make this minimum amount as a blank as well so that there will not be any restriction for minimum or maximum side for the check so this is how it works and you can see this over here that your bank payment is there defined in it this is it already defined so this is how you need to create the payment method for the company code now moving to the next back bank determination execute the next step in the configuration is determining the bank selection procedure this step is actually a series of small steps that build up upon one another so you can see there are number of small steps involved in this particular steps and on the basis of this this particular whole configurations are done so in this step first of all we need to go to define the rank so before defining the rank we first of all need to select our company code so first you need to select the company code over here then we need to go to bank ranking order and double click on the banking order sorry ranking order when you select the company code and double click onto the ranking order it will take you to the next screen so you can see it takes you to the next screen over here suppose i take it off so now over here we will be defining our own ranking for our own bank that is city bank okay so the first you can see the screen is blank as of now to configure this we need to insert a new entries option now there are certain steps in this the first is payment method so we need to assign the payment method as we define the payment method as c for check so the payment method c will be taken next is the currency the currency is usd next is the ranking order so how you want your rank bank payment ranking should go for so the ranking should always be number 1 and then we need to define it over here the house bank so the house bank will be siti city as we defined so this is what we need to fill and our first configuration step is done now we can move to the next that is the bank account there is certain sus need to check back so next move up to the next so we have defined our ranking first now we'll move to the next that is the bank account the next step in the configuration is to configure the accounts that are to be used by the house bank just set up for payment method so in this particular case now again there is one already defined so we can take that off now again in this case now there is no house bank as of now we need to go to 
so moving up to the bank account you need to go to the new entries and then over here you need to define the house bank first you need to select this house bank if you don't remember your house bank you can go to the tab and you can search your own house bank over here so you can see there is a house bank double click on it then the next is again the payment method so payment method you need to take it as C next you need to take it as the currency USD now over here you need to define the account ID so account ID if you don't remember you can you can go for a search F4 so you got your account ID as AP now you need to define the bank sub account so over here you need to take the bank sub account which need to be followed so bank AP account ID AP means outgoing payment that is accounts payable accounts payable means vendor vendor and the to vendors we always make outgoing payment as a major part so we'll be taking over here as a sub account as outgoing bank so let's select the bank GL over here so in this case we'll be taking this outgoing that is it bank sub account and then over here there is a charge indicator we don't need to have it and the last one is business area so business area we are not following up so this is what you need to do you need to assign these three things that is the uh, house bank payment method currency account ID and the bank sub account now you must remember that this bank sub account should be a clearing account that should be used by the payment method for which you are using the account now what does this clearing method clearing account is all about let's move to a new screen and check so if you remember we we created the ledger for these two GL one is outgoing and one is incoming so you can see over here we need to be a it, these two GL need to be a clearing account so for clearing account you need to tick this open item management which is right now has not been selected so to select this you need to go to this change and you need to check select this open item management the same you need to do for your next jail that is the incoming bank new and you need to click on to this select this so your bank now is an clearing account so this is what the configurations we have done with now moving up to the next is the amount now that the appropriate bank accounts have been configured it is the time to maintain the available amount that they can use to configure the amount for bank account we need to double click onto the amount that give us this particular screen and this screen is as of now blank so to to fill the values in this we need to go to the new entries first now the available amount screen will be editable as it is on the screen and we can fill the data in it so now we can enter the identifier that is the house bank so the house bank is city bank over here you need to fill the account ID so if you don't remember you can go for searching it so it is AP next we need to take the date so the normally the date we take is triple nine then you need to take the currency that is USD and now moving up to the next is putting up the maximum amount so the entering the maximum amount of money in the configure bank account that you want to be available to the payment program so whatever the amount you fill on this particular field only that particular amount of payment is will be allowed from the payment program so normally in these cases we always fix the values to the maximum so that the system doesn't create any problem while making the payment otherwise the system will give unwanted errors 
which will create problems later on so this is for a outgoing payment and this is for incoming payment so for incoming payment I will not be filling anything because I am customizing this only for the outgoing that is AP so this is what the amount configuration is all about available amount and then last moving on to the value date so again the value date is again the screen is blank so to fill the values in it we need to go to new entries so value date is used as an average of number of days it takes for a payment to clear the bank the value date is important because it determines the amount available per due date to the payment program it is also important for cash management and liquidity forecasting in the treasury module so for putting up the values defining the values in this first we need to take the payment method that is C we need to take the house bank that is city we need to take the account key AP and then over here we need to put the amount limit so what limit you want to put it over here that it will be taken up so the amount limit is the maximum amount up to which the value date is valid so we'll be taking up to the maximum so that the system doesn't restrict while doing any any business transactions on the later future date now we can save it and the last step expense and charges are not needed as those are not needed to be customized for the automatic payment program so this is what are the basic steps for configuring the payment program as of now as we can move to the PowerPoint presentation we have covered all the customizations configurations in this screen now we'll move to the next is the unit testing so moving up to the unit testing we'll first book post a vendor invoice and then we can make a payment through FDS 58 which can give you an idea that the configurations which we did is working fine and if everything is okay then we'll move for the next that is the automatic payment run so now move before moving all these things whenever we will be making any payment we need the check number to be assigned to them as well so to assign the check number first we need to maintain the check lot so let's move up one by one first we'll go for posting the vendor invoice so let's move to post a vendor invoice FB60 selecting the vendor and then the invoice date and then the posting date in the reference you can put the bill number that is the invoice number text vendor invoice and then suppose I take it as forty thousand dollars of purchases business area is selected now over here so now you can see this forty thousand is over here because I have not filled any amount in this particular screen so you can have a look now after that I have taken the amount over here click on to the enter button on the keyboard so once you put the enter again now you can see it's been green that means it's okay for posting now we can go for simulating the invoice so this is enter so this is the invoice which has been posted over here the vendor is credited and the purchase account is debited post document number is generated for the invoice posting if you want to see the invoice for forty thousand dollars you can go to FBL 1N enter you can take the vendor number and then we can execute the report so in the report you can see that the forty thousand dollar of invoice is already existing in the system in the vendor ledger account as we pass the invoice now moving to the next so we have done with the first step that is the FB60 we are done with the second step that is FBL1N 
to check the vendor line item display if you want to see the vendor balance you can go with the vendor balance as well slash n f k 10 zero n so over here you can execute it and you can see that there is a balance of forty thousand dollar only as on the screen the net balance so this is what the vendor invoice and the vendor ledger and the balances says all about so now we have done all these things what we will be doing is now we will be maintaining the check lot so that when we make the payment the system automatically picks the check number for the house bank so for assigning the check lot we need to go to FCHI so moving up to FCHI give me a second So now check lot. The check lot will determine the check number that will be used for the payment. So let's assign it FCHI is the transaction code. FCHI enter and now we can see that there is a check lot already. This check CHE CK check means the check which the uh, we, we the, are issued by the banks to the vendors or sorry by the company to the vendors for payment so don't mistook as other check it is basically means the check which have been written by the company for the banking transactions so over here now to allot to maintain the check lot you need to first put the company code next your house bank in which house bank you want to assign the check number so the house bank is city and the account ID if you want you can search it with F4 key on your keyboard so it is AP now to assign to you can have a display also of this if you see the display you will find that there is nothing it's all blank so if you it's all blank to assign the check lot you need to go back and then you need to go to the second tab that is change so when you click on to the change it will take you to again a blank screen but now the options on this particular top part on the header has changed so in that particular offer or uh, uh, header you can find the things and you can go to this create so once you go to this create you can put your check number check a range over here so the lot number suppose I give a serial number to the lot but the check number need to be uh, put up over here from and to range so the range suppose I put up over here is 10000010099 so this is my check number lot range and this is my lot number so in this way you need to maintain your check lot once it has been done you can continue enter and you can see it has been assigned over here and then you can save it so the check numbers have been saved so once this has been done now we can move ahead with the next unit testing part that is the vendor payment so we'll make the payment of the invoice of 20,000 sorry 40,000 of invoice against this vendor payment so we'll go to the vendor payment that is F-58 so now there is a small difference between this and what we did in the manual payment that is F-53 in F-53 you will not be able to assign the checks but in F-58 we the checks are automatically assigned in the background whenever you make any payment the second benefit of FDS 58 against FDS 53 is in FDS 58 the system gives a pop-up for check print and payment advice automatically as you post the payment with FDS 58 
where is enabled is 53 such facilities or benefits are not available at all so moving to FDS 58 enter now you can see over here it asks you certain details that first is the what is the company code second which method of payment you would be using third with which bank so you need to select the house bank because a company can have multiple banks but with which bank it is going to make the payment you need to assign that particular bank over here so the house bank need to be selected that is city then again the next is the lot number so the lot number number you need to assign it over here if you remember it's good so you can see otherwise you can go to F4 and you will find the lot number over here so we have selected the lot number and over here the printer you need to take LP01 by default or if else any other printer configurations have been done then you can use that particular print layouts so once this has been done you can go to this enter payment and now over here it comes the same screen as it is F-53 we need to select the amount but um, amount will be forty thousand dollars then again you need to take the date value date then the text for your clarifications now you need to select the vendor for which we will be making this payment so if you don't know you can go and you can search the vendor so it is this and the company code is there so now we have selected these things we can go to process open item so once you go to the process open item you can see this 40,000 of invoice is already there and the payment of 40 and minus 40 invoice is equal to 0 so if you double select click on it it goes 0 so this is what the invoice you can select it from over here so if it is okay you can go to simulate the payment so this is it and now you can post the transaction so the transaction has been posted so you can see the information have been generated on the screen document 1500013 was posted in the company code as I will make it okay another pop-up will come so it will take you to the another screen you can see the print parameter so these are the two parameter where one is for check and one is for payment advice these are the two payment print comes up to you which we need to take the print out of one is of check and one is of advice and both are taken together and are sent to the to the vendors so that he can reconcile his own account and accordingly proceed so if you want to see any of them you need to double click on that and you can say you can click on to this SAP script and it will show you a layout you can see this this is the payment advice where the company TCS address date document number is reflecting then again the vendor code is reflecting so this is not much well the script is not much prepared you can get this script developed as you want as per your design by the by the technical consultant but this is a small layout which is provided by the SAP standard system itself so this is how the payment advice has been reflected so this is how the payment is done now moving up to let's have a look of the document we just posted display so again we move to this is the payment we just made a, min, a couple of minutes back so this is what the payment done and now if I want to see that this particular payment is made with which check number so for that you can go to this environment and you can click on to this check information so when you click on to this check information it gives you the detail of your check for the payment document number so the payment document number is this the house bank is this by which the payment is done the city is this the bank key is this and the bank account number is this the check number is this and the payment date is this much the currency is this and the amount paid is this much 
who is the recipient the recipient is the vendor that is TCS his address is New York United States NY so this is the information you can get from the transaction address 58 so you can easily see that when we configured the automatic payment program your uh, transaction address 58 been able to execute it well and in this the check numbers gets automatically assigned against the payment and you can even take the print of the checks and the advice so once we have done this if you want to see your GL that is the bank line item display we can have a look to that so we can go to this report slash nfbl 3n and even you can have a look to your bank that is 100011 that is outgoing bank execute it and you can see there is a payment of forty thousand dollars from the outgoing bank account so this is how the ledger reflects to you for outgoing bank